an 80s homage that was made in 2015 that feels like 2015. These tropes with modern twists. The plot. Eight friends have hijacked a school bus with their principal, Cunningham, played by Robert Patrick from Terminator 2 Judgment Day, whose name could also be connected with Sean S. Cunningham, who directed Friday the 13th, the 1980 classic. Soon after, though, their bus breaks down and they have to look for fuel. They come across an old, spooky, and seemingly abandoned house that was once home to a sadistic family of cannibals. Now, one by one, people who you think will be featured later in the film or possibly survive the whole movie starts to get picked off, and it is up to the remaining friends to stop the remaining member of the cannibal family. This has some flickers... A weird missing reel, only to have a twist later in the film, because, haha, we did not show it. And that's about it. It represents what most 80s slashers did, but doesn't look the part. Sure, people are dressed like it's 1984, which is when the movie takes place, but it's needed a bit more grain. Robert Patrick was awesome in this movie. He had some great one-liners geared to the so-called brats. He also has a rocking vehicle with disco music playing every time he pulls up somewhere in this crazy cool car. There is a ton of character development in this movie. 35 minutes in and I was fine where things were going. I liked the characters a lot and didn't want any of them to die. Then about 50 minutes in or so they start to become stale. The whole will they or won't they hook up is answered for some and not for others. It was kind of annoying. And then they try to spice it up by having some of them not end up sharing the same feelings as their counterpart. After all that decent crap, we get to the awesome stuff. The very first kill of the movie literally knocked the wind out of me. I screamed, WHAT?! at the screen and got a big gut punch. I thought, alright, this is going to be interesting and creative. Well... Our characters are not stupid for a majority of the film. They stick together when they realize the killer is out there. That is, until their leader is killed. And then it's everyone run in different directions! They were going to take on the killer. But two of them that have weapons ready suddenly realize this isn't how slashers work. And one of them pushes out. Keep in mind, there were two guys and three, well, two capable girls. Left defend him off. But they were damsels until there was no one else to protect them. Well, two of them. Yeah, now. As cool as the killer could have been, we got this guy with a scraggly beard and bad teeth. <sighs> Come on! This movie was passable at first, but now it really is only decent. They would need something awesome to win me back. Oh, wait. The gore! The effects! Awesome. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Gory impaling! A brutal manual drilling. A bloody bear trap kill. A fakeish but an appreciatively greasy off-screen decapitation. A dude is casually crushed under a car. I knocked the wood out from underneath the car. There we go, crushed. It's a reenactment, shut up! Some nasty bashing and a sick-ass scene where a character is sliced through the eye with a shard of glass. Fulci style mother It's bloody and brutal. And the effects are great. A lot of cool practical makeup and some decent looking CG blood. If only they made the killer look this gnarly. The musical score, honestly, it wasn't that great. They have some songs on the bus they play that aren't that memorable. The rest of the movie has a pretty generic score too. 
some of the music was featured in Sharknado. Yeah, um, that's going kind of low. This is not terrible. In fact, it's a bit above decent. It could have been more. It could have been great, but mediocrity is what plagues this movie. I still think this movie is fun, though. A few pacing issues, some weak character decisions, and a lack of marketed effects aside, I could see this movie getting a cool and faster sequel. Long live 80s horror. Overall, I give Lost After Dark a 3 out of 5. Lion Brian, ghetto host of Horror Show Entertainment. Make sure to like my Facebook page in the description below to leave comments and subscribe.